So Rise of the Beasts, I've seen it twice now, and I'm absolutely pumped about it. I mean, although there are a couple of things we've got to talk about. So let's do this. First section, no spoilers. Kind of just like my overall feelings. Then I will give you a big old spoiler warning before I lay it all out there. So let's do it. Let's get stuck right in. So if I had to boil all my thoughts down to one single sentence, I would say that I had an absolute blast during this movie. But there were a couple of little things that did disappoint me. But overall, I don't think you're going to be disappointed either. I think I preferred this to Bumblebee, and I hold Bumblebee in very high regard. If you can put those little disappointments to the back of your mind, I think this is a more enjoyable movie. Because the moments where this movie was good were really good. Like, like it had me welling up a couple of times, and I don't well up that easy. I'm not really a weller-upper. I am really attached to these characters, and maybe that's why I was welling up so much. I am a real man. So let's talk about the human characters first. The good thing is that they didn't get in the way, and they integrated them pretty well. They were likable, but unlike Bumblebee, I did feel that they took precious screen time away from what you actually want to see. I mean, as, as a Transformers fan, I always want more Transformers and less human stuff. But at the same time, the humans do give you something to latch onto that you, you kind of need. But the issue is that with the humans taking up so much screen time, they obviously had to prioritize which bots to give screen time to because there's obviously quite a roster going on here. So it's kind of this delicate balancing act. And there were a couple of characters that I did feel a little short change with and that we definitely needed to see more of. One of my big fears from beforehand was true, unfortunately, but it didn't actually ruin all of the stuff that I liked about this movie. I was a little pissed off that some actually kind of pivotal stuff is in the trailer. Basically, there's one big thing that happens in the movie, and because of what you've seen in the trailer, you can kind of work out that it's actually not that important. And this actually happens not once, but twice. So that kind of pissed me off. And sure, the critics will say all of the obvious stuff. So amazing visuals, they'll say that it's got a simplistic plot, but it's got a lot of heart. Those are the three things that you will hear in every single review, I guarantee it. And to be honest, they're all true. But the thing is, they're assessing it like any big budget movie. But those of us who've grown up with this franchise, who, you know, feel like these characters are kind of part of their childhoods, might see things slightly differently. It might mean that you're slightly more forgiving because you love the franchise. It might also mean that you're less forgiving because you love the franchise. In my case, I think it made me more forgiving. Okay, I'm going to wrap up the spoiler-free section right there. For you guys that are out of here, enjoy the movie. Get back here and let me know what you thought of it. For the rest of us, spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Spoilers. Let's get the disappointments out of the way first. Unicron is kind of just the threat. He does show up to Earth and starts hoovering up the place, but he never transforms into robot mode. And you've kind of seen most of it in the trailer. So that was a real bummer. It really reminded me of the Fantastic Four sequel, you know, the one with Jessica Alba, where we were all like, oh my God, Silver Surfer, that means Galactus, right? And then Galactus was just this fucking cloud of smoke. It's, um, well, it's not as bad as that. He shows up in the third act and he starts hoovering up Earth. But again, you want that robot mode, don't you? Obviously, there's no mention of the Decepticons. There's no mention of Megatron or the Civil War at all, in fact. There's no mention of Charlie from Bumblebee. I wondered what had happened to her. But those are kind of small things. My second big disappointment was the fact that you only get to see the Maximals transform once. They stay in their alt modes the whole time. And Air Razor never transforms. When they do, though, it gave me goosebumps. That was one of the moments that... I was, I was like stamping the floor. I had tears in my eyes. And yeah, I know that's really sad, but I, I don't care. And that's extra hard to take because Optimus Primal in robot mode looks so cool. I really, really wanted more of that. Rhinox, I don't think had a single line of dialogue or close up of his face even. And Cheetor has a couple of lines and you see him a little better here and there. Equally, I was kind of disappointed that the Scorponox weren't in it a little more. And they didn't carry that much threat with them. Like they looked awesome, but they didn't feel that dangerous. So basically you had like the small freezers that came out of Scourge's body. You had like a larger version of that. And then you had the Scorponox, which was supposed to be the reinforcements. But every time you see them, they're just getting ripped apart by Autobots and Maximals. So they didn't feel that intimidating. I mean, I love the way they look, though. Another thing was that this is one of those movies where they give Prime kind of an arc. Like, he's not like the all-powerful Robo-Jesus that we're used to seeing. He's, he kind of becomes that during the course of this movie. 
The way they explain that is that he has taken the burden for the Autobots being stuck on Earth for the past seven years. And Optimus Primal says it best when he says that Optimus Prime is not the legendary warrior that he'd heard about in the past. The scene at the museum shows how the Autobots are completely outmatched by the Terracons. Prime and Scourge go head to head and they end up like both pushing on Prime's axe and Scourge is like, he's just easily pushing him back and, and Optimus is really surprised. The explanation for that being that apparently bots who have the energy of Unicron within them are nearly invincible and they need to be saved by Air Razor. Like Air Razor swoops in, decimates the place and the Terracons decide, well, okay, we've got what we want. Let's get out of here. But it really shows that the Autobots are kind of quite a lot weaker than the Maximals and of course the Terracons. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is kind of like unusual feeling that the Autobots are probably the third strongest faction here out of three. But again, I could kind of live with that. Let's talk about some of the stuff that I loved. There's a big thing with Air Razor. So at one point, Scourge fires like a rust tick, like a mine, and it attaches itself to her wing and infects her with rust, like the rust plague. And it gradually corrupts her and takes her over and turns her evil. And when she finally does completely turn to the dark side, Optimus Primal has to kill her. And it's a fucking sad moment. So the Maximals have got this creed, like they've sworn to protect life no matter what. So they will die and they will kill each other for like the human race, for example. Ape Link was awesome. He really feels like a father to Primal, like a bigger, older version of Primal. And it's really sad when he chooses to stay behind. I would have loved to have seen more of that Maximal planet, whatever it was. And generally just a little bit more background information on this race, who must be related to Cybertronians somehow, but it doesn't seem that the Autobots have heard of them, whereas they have heard of the Autobots. Another brilliant moment comes when, so you know that bit for the trailer where Scourge kind of kills Bumblebee? Basically, he's not really killing him. He's kind of leeching all his energon out and he goes dormant. And then when they fly to Peru, they lay him on this kind of like energon bed, but it's inert energon and it's not, it's not active. And then when everything starts to kick off with the space bridge and bringing Unicron to Earth, the space bridge releases this huge jolt of energon, which re-energizes Bumblebee and kind of brings him back to life. So there's a moment in that big battle at the end where Stratosphere suddenly flies over, his back door opens, and then you get that bit from the trailer where Bumblebee jumps out. And of course, I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. But just the fact that he like drops his visor down, LL Cool J's Don't Call It A Comeback starts playing, and then he leaps out. It's an epic moment, really cool. Mirage suddenly decided to take on Scourge by himself. And that went better than I was expecting it to. Until Noah got involved and then Mirage had to sort of shield him and got shot in the back several times and died. Well, not exactly died because it's him that forms the exosuit that we saw in the trailer. Like the exosuit is Mirage. And then there's an epic moment where Noah in his exosuit goes up against Scourge alone and Scourge is like, you're not gonna face me alone, are you? And Prime appears behind him and he's like, he's not alone. That blew my tiny little mind. And then at the end, it starts to look like Prime is gonna sacrifice himself and he starts getting sucked up by Unicron. But it's Noah in the Mirage suit that saves him. That gave me goosebumps. And then after Optimus Primal helps pull him back down to the ground, he does that amazing transformation, puts Noah inside himself and then drives off. You know that bit from the trailer that probably shouldn't have been in the trailer? But as he does that, we get the Prime theme, the Steve Jablonski Prime theme from the Bayverse movies. And that's pretty much where I lost my shit. Like goosebumps, tears in the eyes, the full on fucking nerdgasm that ordinary people just don't understand. And then after that, Noah goes for this job interview and what he thinks is like a warehouse. And there's this guy, you kind of know from the off that there's more to it than what's just on the surface. It turns out that he's from G.I. Joe and he would love Noah to join G.I. Joe. And my mind was absolutely blown at that point. I've got a feeling that the idea of a Transformers G.I. Joe crossover is not going to be the most popular, but I've read a few of the comics and they are pretty decent. I reckon it could be awesome. It has to be done right though, not like those other G.I. Joe movies. And every time I think back about this movie, I just remember more and more cool stuff. Like I know that we don't see enough Rhinox, but the bits that we do see are amazing. Obviously there's a bit from the trailer that probably shouldn't be in the trailer, where RC is standing on his back, like shooting all the Scorponox. But then there's another bit where he's standing there with this huge hammer and he's just slamming and slamming and slamming these bad guys. The freezers are basically just Frenzy from Transformers 2007, except Frenzy transformed into like a hi-fi, right? These guys don't. 
I know the toy transforms into sort of a turret, like a gun on legs, but I don't think that happens in the movie. They fulfill the same function, you know what I mean? They're smaller bots that can get in smaller spaces and chase the humans. One of the smaller spaces they can squeeze into is Scourge himself, because they kind of come out of his body. I thought that was pretty cool. He just kind of keeps one there, just in case, you know? They kind of give the humans something that they can fight back against. Like, obviously, they can't fight Scourge, because, you know, Prime can't fight Scourge. And Scourge is pretty scary. And he comes across as really powerful too. In that first fight with Ape Link, he blasts a hole clean through his torso. At one point, his mask is knocked off and the camera lingers on his face, like on his real face. And I wonder if I missed something here because honestly, I didn't recognize him. Was I supposed to recognize him? I don't know. I'm going to see the movie again tonight. So, you know, this might turn out to be just me being dense. Oh, and you know what? You'll get through this whole movie without it occurring to you that this is Peter Dinklage. Like fucking Tyrion, man. I drink and I know things and I also kill monkey robots. And that voice is a big part of why Scourge is so scary. But as with all the other robotic characters, you'll want more time with Scourge. You'll want to understand him better. Like, wh where's he come from? How did Unicron get him under his grasp? Wheeljack, uh, I don't know what's going on with Wheeljack. I don't know why he's suddenly Spanish. Like, it's kind of picked up on. Nora at one point says, like, why are you Spanish, bro? And Wheeljack goes like, well, I don't know what you mean. What are you talking about? And that's it. Like, it's obviously because he was in Peru, but that just begs the question, what was he doing there when all the other Autobots were in New York? So in my mind, this is not Wheeljack. This is a new bot called Pablo. Like, he's kind of an odd character too. Like, the first time you meet him, he drives out of the forest. And then he's on about how he's studying caterpillars turning into butterflies. So I don't know if there's some sort of allegory there. Maybe some sort of metaphor for, you know, changing form and becoming something else. I don't know. Not really clarified. There's one moment where I think he's scanning stuff, which gives you a little bit of a feeling that he's supposed to be a scientist. And he's really not a very good fighter. So yeah, it's just a bit confusing what's going on with this guy. The bot that I was most looking forward to seeing was Battle Trap, actually. And he does have a couple of good set pieces. He's got this devastating minigun that comes out of his wrist. I love that thing so much. Like his wrecking ball chain thing was awesome. Like it can latch onto things. In the museum scene, it latches onto like a pillar and then he yanks it out and he throws that, I think. That was very cool. You see most of what he does during the highway chase in the trailer. And then he gets tag teamed by both Primal and Prime in the final battle and gets taken out quite early. He's another bot that we definitely needed to see more of. I love the little Easter egg or whatever you want to call it, where Mirage is going through alt modes. Like he changes to a, like a Lamborghini Countach type thing, although he says the word Ferrari. And then you see him in his IndyCar mode before he eventually settles on a dump truck, which I thought was pretty funny for a bot who kind of loves himself. Although it does make you wonder, how is this working now? Like previously bots had to scan a vehicle before they could adopt it as their alt mode. But I don't know, it could be that they've changed that now. And he's kind of got a catalog of alt modes like stored within his memory or something. All right, you guys, I think I've spoiled enough for you for now. Please make sure you guys go and see this movie. We need to make this as big a success as it can possibly be because that's the best way to ensure that we'll get more of this kind of stuff. I've seen it twice now. I'll probably go and see it a third time. So make sure you're subscribed for more Rise of the Beast stuff and Transformers stuff in general. So until the next one, thank you very much for watching and cheerio, bye. <laughs>